sorry to insult you, but your iPhone is starting to look a little bit small, at least in comparison to these. This is the iPhone 6 with a 4.7 inch display, and this is the iPhone 6 Plus with a 5.5 inch display. Yes, these have got bigger screens, but there's lots more in them too, including new cameras and NFC chips to help you kill your wallet. It's a 6. What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and in this video I wanted to talk about the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. These are two new products we have never seen before in the terms of size. I mean, 4.7 and 5.5 inches, that's a big step up from the original iPhone 3.5 inch display, and of course there's a reason for it. Apple wants to share market share with Android, bring users over, so it's totally understandable. However, for people that want to buy these products, you're going to be deciding, should I buy the iPhone 6 or the iPhone 6 Plus? So in this video, I want to share with you guys everything that's different between these two models, which one you should buy, and why. You know, what was really interesting to me is that Apple actually never addressed us as to why they are releasing bigger phones. And everybody really knows it's because Android is beating on the back door, you know, they're releasing new products, they're dominating that part of the market share, so Apple wants in and they want some of that as well. Now with these larger iPhones, we're going to be seeing a lot of Android users come in and start using iPhone. For a lot of these people, if you're watching, you may have never even used iPhone before. It's a new experience to you and, you know, it is a unique experience. But in this video, hopefully, I can go ahead and settle some of your doubts, give you an idea of what you're expecting with the new iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. Now, of course, once you do pick up the iPhone 6 or iPhone 6 Plus, you'll notice that the size is the number one difference. You know, the 4.7 inch model is already a big step up from the 4.0. There's a lot of extra screen space and, you know, I'll get to my opinion at the end, but it's a really good in between, between the 5.5 and the 4.0 of the 5S. The iPhone 6 features a 4.7 inch IPS display. Now, in order to make up for the extra real estate, Apple did have to cram in more pixels there. So we're going to be seeing a bump up in resolution to 1334 by 750 pixels. You know, that's nothing special. It has a 326 pixel density, which keeps it at retina spec. Now the iPhone 6 Plus has a high resolution. It's at 1920 by 1080. Of course, it has a larger display. And a 1080p display nowadays isn't anything special. Most smartphones on the market have this resolution already. So the pixel density is a little bit higher at 401. So if you're viewing content, picture movies, it's gonna be a little bit sharper on the iPhone 6 Plus due to the extra pixels. Now, aside from that, there's really no difference in displays. Contrast ratio is almost entirely the same, and other than the actual size and pixel density, there's not much different. It's a matter of personal preference whether or not you want a larger display, like an iPad Mini Mini, or just a standard iPhone 6 display. It was rumored that the display would be covered in sapphire or built with a sapphire crystal glass, but unfortunately, no one has been able to confirm that, and Apple didn't address that at all in the event, so I think we're just looking at a Gorilla Glass coating. So the iPhone 6, with its larger, you know, gargantuan 5.5 inch display, is going to create a problem, and that's one-handed use. Fortunately, Apple looked into it, and they created a software solution, and in no way is this new. It's been on Android for a while, but Apple's version is that you touch the Touch ID sensor twice, and the whole screen is going to scale down halfway. Now, right here, you're going to be able to use it with one-handed operation, which is cool. You know, it's neat. You don't have to go out of your way to press something on the screen. You just double tap a button that's already there, and boom, you can use it with one hand. So if you're looking to buy the iPhone 6 Plus, take into account it's a pretty big phone. You know, it's going to be harder to store, harder to carry with you. Take all of that into account. But if you absolutely need it, I bet it's going to be an amazing phone. The number one feature that the iPhone 6 Plus has over the iPhone 6 is in its camera. Apple decided to put real optical image stabilization inside of the iPhone 6 Plus camera. Now what this means is when you're recording video, you're not going to get any sort of shake. It's going to be very fluid, very smooth. So what the iPhone 5S does and the iPhone 6 will do is use digital image stabilization. It's not going to have an actual little motor in there, you know, stabilizing the camera, but it still does a good job. I have no complaints for the 5S. I could just imagine that the iPhone 6 Plus will do it so much better and I can't wait to test out the difference in real world use. So the iPhone 6 Plus camera is definitely a better upgrade than the iPhone 6. Optical image stabilization is a great feature. You know, it's very rare nowadays to find in any mobile phones. Another major selling point of the iPhone 6 Plus is its battery. Because it's a larger phone, there's a bigger housing, more room for a battery. So Apple did just that. They stuck a huge battery inside of the 6 Plus. It's rated somewhere around 2900 mAh versus 1900 of the iPhone 6. So what that translates to in actual daytime usage is pretty impressive. For music playback, that's 80 hours versus 50. 3G talk time, 24 hours versus 14. For video playback, that's 14 hours versus 11. Standby time, 300 